Hey guys, so I made a Facebook post a few weeks ago about a micro long range concept I'm working on, a four inch micro long range concept. And a few of you guys have asked me if there's any progress. So although I'm not nearly done with this, there is still a lot of work to do and this thing hasn't flown yet and the build isn't even 100% finished. I thought I'd just share my progress in this video and also give you a bit more detail about why I'm building is what the use case is and what I'm trying to achieve with this concept. Now, the overall concept of this is to do a long range micro, which basically to me is a scaled down version of a seven inch cinematic long range quad with micro components on a four inch platform that I choose for this. What is this supposed to be good for? I think this could open up the opportunity to do cinematic and uh, long range and really this kind of relaxed, epic flying in more locations. Of course, you will not have the range um, or the flight times of a seven inch, especially not the range in terms of distance because of cruising speeds that will be way lower on a micro, but you could get let's say the same sort of flight experience in more places because this thing will just be way below 250 grams. So a lot less legal issues and a lot more places to fly legally. And also it should attract way less attention due to its low noise and small size than a seven inch. So that's the idea. At the same time, I want to have all the capabilities a seven inch has. So this thing will have 4K, HD recording and 800 milliwatt VTX crossfire and I'm also trying to fit a GPS and a buzzer in here. So pretty much all the technology who you have in a seven inch but just in this very small package. That's basically what I'm trying to do. Now the frame I designed for this is a four inch dead cat. Pretty much classic freestyle frame, just smaller. And uh, my tension why I used four inches is that I just hope it will give this thing higher cruising speed and more efficiency to ensure that the flight times are higher than on a three inch like this one, for example. I hope this will boost the flight times. The props I have here are 3.7 inch King Kong props. Matthew Nguyen was the first to use those on a toothpick. Um, but as far as I know, there will be more four inch T-mount props in the future so i'm hoping there will be more prop choice but i think four inch is the right size to go here um just to and ensure that this thing i mean it, it needs a decent fly time and the bigger the props get the more efficiency you can get so that's what i'm trying to to achieve here which is four inch dead cat of course because it's a very small main body and pretty big props in comparison so if I wouldn't do a dead cat design, um, the props would just ruin the HD footage of the Tarsier because they would be really noticeably in the field of view. So I had to do a pretty extreme dead cat design to just move them out of the field of view. Now, um, the frame itself, by the way, is 34 grams, so it's not super light, but for a four inch, it's very light. It's, it's more, it's heavier than the pickle, but that one is a three inch. And the special thing about it is that I have a 16 by 16 stack mount in the front and a 20 by 20 in the back. And I'm going to go into more details of the components too and why I choose to do the 1620 layout uh, just to fit the very specific electronics I want to have in this quad. The top plate here, this, these split bottom plates are 1.5 millimeters and uh, the advantage of having this split bottom plate here, I hope you can see this, is that the, the front part is a bit higher. So I have 25 millimeter standoffs here that have enough space for the Cadex here camera, which is a bit bigger and um, 20 millimeters here in the back for the electronics, which is way more than enough to fit all the stuff. Um, also, I, I designed some TPU parts here, a battery pad, um, this thing here to fit a linear antenna. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that this will work out well as a platform for this 
micro long range thing. Now let's look into the components I'm trying to use because they were the main motivation <laughs> um, of why this frame design turned out the way it did with the 16 by 16 and 20 by 20. All right, now I took off the top plate so it's easier for you to see what is inside of this quad. And I played around with a lot of different ideas of what kind of electronics to fit inside of, um, of this long range concept. Uh, all in one ESC, FCs, uh, whoop size boards, 20 by 20, 16 by 16. Um, but I knew one thing I had to fit in any case that would be the 20 by 20 boards of the Cadex Tazier camera. Um, so what I came up with would, was, let's say, the most efficient use of the space I have in this tiny body, in my opinion, is a 16 by 16 in front and a 20 by 20 in the back end. This allows me to have a 20 by 20 VTX stacked on top of the Tazier boards. So to kind of capitalize on the 20 by 20 mounts I in any case need because of these two boards. Now finding a VTX that uh, perfectly fits this or has the right specifications wasn't that easy, but I really found the perfect one. This is the, this is the second one here I have. This is the oh, the other way around. This is the Rush FPV Tank Ultimate Mini, and this has 800 milliwatts, watts, which is great. So it does have the same transmitting power that a big seven-inch long-range quad has, which should mean that there will be no range issues at all with the analog FPV feed. Also, this things this thing takes up to eight uh, S voltage input and it's another thing that was important to me is that it's got these buttons here so I can switch the power and the channels without using smart audio and it's got indicator lights here showing me uh, the power and the channel uh, why is this important here well because these the 16 by 16 stacks have a very limited number of accessible UART ports so I am not sure if I will be able to use smart audio or I might have to sacrifice it to run this GPS. Now, I'm not sure which one I will pick, either smart audio or the GPS. It will depend uh, how I can remap the resources on this flight controller. This is a 16 by 16 iFlight 12 amp ESC with the F4 flight controller on top. And this is pretty much state of the art for 16 by 16 stacks. Now the problem is it has only one accessible UART, TX and RX and another one that is accessible for the, if you stack the iFlight uh, VTX on it here through the pins. So I think one TX should be accessible here if I manage to solder something on this pin connector. It shouldn't be a problem. So. But to be honest, this is, this is one of the things I still need to figure out. I really need to look at what is available on this flight controller and how I can remap it to run as much stuff as possible because it would be great to have a GPS. What I have here is the BN180. This is as far as I know the smallest GPS you can get. That would be really cool to have a GPS, but that's still something I have to look into. Uh, some of you guys have ideas how I can free up a spare... Um, you are for the GPS, also have smart audio and a crossfire that also needs a TX and RX. Uh, please leave a comment below and let me know. But I think uh, with soft serial, it sh should be possible to do that. Um, now, of course, I uh, the other components I'm using is uh, a crossfire Nano Air RX. I think this is really a must have on any long range, also micro long range and the Cadex Tarsier, which I really like because this one's got a really decent FPV feed, which none of the single lens split type cameras have. And also the 4K footage this camera records is really pretty usable. So you can actually upload this on YouTube and it doesn't look horrible. <laughs> it actually looks really good, um, which, isn't the case for all the single lens uh, HD only cams. So that's the electronics I have inside. Another thing I initially wanted to fit but probably won't fit is a tiny tiny buzzer which with a 
battery here. This only weighs two grams, which is great. I wanted to fit this inside too, but probably I just won't have the space uh, to put it behind the, the cam here as I initially intended. Um, but so much for the electronics in here. 800 milliwatt VTX, 16 by 16 stack, uh, Crossfire, and a Tarsier, which is really a pretty cool package in terms of features for a IA Micro. All right, now let's put the top plate back on and uh, talk about the motors in the meantime. Now what I'm using here are the new Kebab FPV 1303 3000, uh, 4300 kV motors, which could be a good match for um, this concept in my opinion, because they are pretty light and uh, I really want to have a low all up weight and I don't need big motors with that much power for this kind of uh, cinem cinematic flying. So initially I was thinking about using 1404s, but now I'm going to try these 1303, hoping they are in focus now, 1303 AMAX motors. They are a bit high KV of course for these 3.7 inch props or four inch props, but my plan is uh, to try to run this on 2S to increase efficiency and not have them draw too much amps and therefore have very good uh, flight times. The only annoying thing is the two millimeter shaft they have. This is really annoying because the only prop that is available is this three inch gem fan 3080, 18 props. So just like in the good old days where toothpicks first appeared, we are back to drilling props. So I'll have to drill those. And to be honest, I still need to get a drill with the right size. Um, yes, so that's about the, the progress I made. Uh, by the way, I don't think I told you the weight of this thing. This is only 100 grams and it's pretty much complete. So way, way below the uh, 250 grams, even if you put a heavy battery on there. Yep, uh, good. I hope, I hope this uh, answered most of the questions you had about the progress I made. Um, and I really hope this, this uh, concept will work out because it would be super cool to have a micro long range platform, but for now, uh, still a lot of work to do. So guys, if you have any suggestions uh, how to improve this, how I could unlock all the possible UARTs this flight controller could offer to run the GPS and so on, um, please let me know, please leave a comment below. And so far, thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this useful and don't forget to subscribe.